Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. It's been quite some time since I first showed you how to build and maintain your new or existing alt army. I hope that adventure has been going well for you. Now it's time to check in, do some evaluating with what you've done, and strengthen your focus in a new way so you can improve your time management with what you have. I've had the wonderful opportunity to chat with many of you about your alt armies during my streams on Twitch, and a couple of recurring themes I've noticed are indecisiveness on choosing a true main and stress from starting over repeatedly because of it. I won't claim to solve that problem for you, but I can show you what helps me. Before we dig in, I want you to know that this is an advanced step in your alt army journey. So if you haven't seen the previous videos in this series, I recommend doing so first so that you can best make use of this information. I've made a compilation of it for easy watching linked in the description. So here's our subject. Mains. A main is typically defined by the character you spend the most time playing and have achieved the most on, or it's at least the character you're currently focusing on the most. That's great and all, but that means your main is only one class. World of Warcraft has a lot of very class, armor, race, and faction specific stuff, so with a lot of options on hand, how do we choose? Well, if you wanted an alt army in the first place, it's likely you wanted to experience, collect, or farm far more than what one class can do. So a category I've called class mains are my solution. There are layers to this, so strap in and have your alt tracking sheet at the ready for note taking. The first layer, class mains. These, just as the name suggests, are your mains of each class. Currently, there are 13 classes in game, so I have 13 class mains, and add a new one each time classes are added. So one of each class. These I call my class mains because any content I need a specific class for, I will have a max level of that class who does all the things. I treat these as mains. They complete a lot of content, and this is why I don't call them alts. They do almost everything my true main does, within reason. This means that when you need, say, a hunter to go do the new max level content, or to go do hunter specific legacy stuff that needs a lot of work to unlock or access, you choose this hunter. This character is old, has a lot completed on it, including campaigns, reputations, achievements, and more. This is a well-seasoned character, and that's why it's your main of that class. I have other hunters, of course, but they're just extra bodies for the alt army machine. Best use when you want to throw a ton of alts at a new project like farming transmog or mounts from raids. These are actual alts and do not do nearly as much content as the main of that class. We're trying to protect our sanity here by playing smarter not harder. That's just the first layer though. Obviously, in this short list of class mains, one of them is your true main or main main, as I call it. Mine's the paladin. This paladin does everything. They're the first to max level, the focus of achievements and grinds, the one who collects all the reputations, not just the needed ones, and so on. Paladin is a solid class for me because I can solo anything with it. I've got all three roles for my specs, and I've got strong, well-rounded utility like heals, shields, an interrupt, a taunt, speed boost, and I have both ranged and AoE abilities. There's nothing my Paladin can't do even in crappy gear, so this class is my workhorse and is always my go-to character when I need to grind out main-related things. Notice I didn't say Paladin was my favorite class, that's because it's not. Ironically, my favorite classes based on playstyle are Monk, Hunter, Mage, and Demon Hunter. Paladin just happens to be my most solid, 
well-rounded powerhouse class for my needs, since I play solo the vast majority of my time. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy playing it though, and I still have those favorite classes as mains too. But let me tell you, I could not do on my mage what my paladin does. That's why I stick to that class for the hard stuff. Another layer still is faction mains. If you want to go ham and do all class mains for both factions, you can, but that's honestly a bit overkill, and not needed in my opinion thanks to cross-faction guilds and mail. So I just have one main of each class with both factions spread among them. If I truly need more than that, I'm getting into niche, very rare content, such as needing a Blood Elf Paladin specifically, or something to unlock heritage armor. Those situations are what alts are for. Regardless, I need at least one Alliance main and at least one Horde main. Roleplay is what determined my faction choices to begin with, but regardless, I need a Horde main because my Paladin is Alliance. This character does almost as much as my Alliance main because there are a lot of differences in faction-related gameplay. Even the main campaigns are different sometimes, with faction-based NPCs, lore, and rewards. To see both sides, I needed a main of both factions. Since Paladin was already taken, I've gone with Death Knight. Again, mostly because of RP influence, but also because DK has both tank and DPS specs to help solo stuff if I need it. The layers continue even deeper because we also, realistically, should have these class mains be our profession mains. Recipes are often tied to reputations, raids, quests, rare drops, and other grinds, and leveling the profession itself is quite an investment. We don't want to do that across various alts for the same profession when so much work needs to be done on just one. So these same class mains are also my profession mains. I do have a video covering how best to use that topic, linked in the description here, as well as a newer version coming soon, which will also be linked there when it's ready. So give those a look if you haven't, since professions and classes are armor dependent. Speaking of armor, here's yet another layer. We need armor mains. In some cases, we don't need every single class for a grind involving only your mains. We only need one of each armor type to collect all the transmog. A prime example are the Shadowlands Covenants and all of the collectibles from those, because they are not class specific. However, we do need to choose very specific classes because of weapon restrictions. For plate armor, obviously Paladin is my main main, so that one is locked in. But Warrior is a good one too, because they can learn all weapon transmog except for glaives and wands. Pretty crazy, right? Both Paladin and Warrior can also learn shields and offhands, so you're covered there. I actually don't recommend DK, and the male armor class choices will show why. Your male armor main will depend on what you chose for plate. If you chose Paladin, you'll want a Hunter, so you can learn bows, guns, and crossbows. If you chose a Warrior, you can do Hunter, Shaman, or Evoker, since Warrior can learn all the weapons those classes can, including the shields that Shamans can use. If you went with DK, however, you'll need both a Hunter and a Shaman for the ranged weapons and the shields, since DK can learn neither. So that's why I said no DK for Plate if you can help it. My combo is Paladin and Hunter. Also, if you'd like to see in more detail why Warrior is the best transmog farmer ever, I've got a video for that linked in the description as well. For leather armor, we don't really have much of an option. It's Demon Hunter, simply because currently only Demon Hunters can learn glaives. So unless you want to double up on farming leather or weapons, which seems redundant, just stick with Demon Hunter. For cloth, you can actually choose from all three. Mage, Priest, and Warlock can all learn cloth armor, wands, and daggers, so you're open on choice here. I chose Mage just because it's my favorite of those three. So that means my choices are Paladin, Hunter, Demon Hunter, and Mage. These four are my armor mains, the mains of those four classes. One of them is my true main, the Paladin. And of course, they are all profession mains. And as a bonus, though it may be unneeded, 
Two of those four classes are Horde, and two of them are Alliance. All my bases are covered. See why I said this was layered? If we make sure to do it this way, this means you won't have to double up on farming for something you could have just done on your class mains if you stop to take a look at what it is you need to do. This can save you a lot of time and stress. Trust me. So now that you understand what this is all about, how do you go about choosing your classmates? If you're still fresh and new, your choices are easier because you can just make what you need and adjust accordingly. If you have a plethora of old characters, however, because you've been playing for more than one expansion, I strongly recommend going through these alts and examining what they've already done. Regardless of age, whatever character has achieved the most, including content no longer available, are the ones I say you should promote to class main. For example, the determining factor for me when I chose my class mains was which character had completed all of the original Mage Tower challenges back in Legion, which you can no longer unlock the appearances for. Because of this, most progress to unlock any more skins from that row has to be done on that character. It's stuff like this that you don't want, or simply can't, replicate on newer alts, and thus, that means these characters are my class mains. Fully leveled professions with no longer available recipes can be another determining factor if you have anything like that. Even things as simple as who's quested the most, unlocked the most, or done the most expansion campaigns can help steer your decision. I suggest all of this because you've likely done more than you think you have, and consolidating it like this will give you a much needed leg up that you thought you didn't have. Once you've chosen your class mains, make sure you track them on your alt army spreadsheets or lists of choice so that you won't lose them. Keep track of these. These are meant to be permanent to help save you from stress. And now you can go through them and reassign professions if needed, as well as give them armor main status based on what we covered earlier in this video. I really hope this helps you. Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live five days a week to chat with, so come hang out! And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list! As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.